The next PID we have here right after throttle position is manifold absolute pressure sensor. You can see right now with the engine and a hot engine base idle, um, it's at 30 to 32 kilopascals. Myself, I know we have options with our scan tool. We can look at English or we can look at metric. I want you to know that there is a higher resolution when you pick metric. Of course, when you pick metric, you're going to be looking instead of inches of mercury, you're going to be looking at kilopascals. Okay, this, because the engine is turbocharged, we will have a two bar map sensor. That means this map sensor is capable of reading atmospheric pressure and then another atmospheric pressure. Well, atmospheric pressure in kilopascals is roughly 100 kilopascals. So this map sensor's range, because it's a two bar map sensor, is 200 kilopascals. Because once we start getting into a positive boost pressure, then we're going to go above 100 in our manifold absolute pressure. If the vehicle is naturally aspirated, no turbocharger, then we look at our map sensor range from 0 to 100. If we were looking at inches of mercury, we would only have a number scale of 0 to 30, and then out of that we'd only really use 0 to 21. And let me explain to you. A good idle is 21 inches of vacuum. Wide open throttle is 0 inches of vacuum. So your scale is 0 to 21 that you have to use, 21 numbers. If we're looking, for example here, if this vehicle is naturally aspirated, we're at 30 at idle. We know that at wide open throttle, without a turbocharger, we're going to be 100. Look at the scale, that's 70 numbers. That's a lot better resolution where we're watching for a pinpoint area that may have a problem. If this engine is turbocharged, which this one is, look at what our scale is. It's 70, 30 to 100, while it's in no boost. When it goes into boost, now there's another 100 kilopascals, providing that this engine would make another 14.7 pounds of boost. It probably won't make that, but let's say that this engine makes 7 pounds of boost. Well, that's 50 kilopascals. That's half of 100 or half of 14.7, 7.4, somewhere in there. So there's a lot better, my tip is there's a lot better resolution. Get away from inches of mercury. For example, if I wanted to sweep test the map sensor and I hook up my handheld vacuum pump, don't be watching the numbers change in inches of mercury. See if you can change the vacuum to the map sensor and watch the kilopascals change in KPA numbers 1 through 100. That's going to give you a lot better resolution. And a good strong engine idle vacuum, as we see here on this 2020 Malibu, is around 30 to 32 kilopascals of manifold pressure. We can also use the map sensor, for example, Let's say that it's a naturally aspirated vehicle, but we had, there was high level indicators that suspect that maybe we had one or more clogged catalytic converters. You could use the MAP sensor because as the pressure builds up and can't get out the exhaust, where's it going to go? It's going to go into the manifold, and that manifold pressure is going to rise. You're thinking it's not going the right direction. So that could be a high level indicator. Another high level indicator, if we go back, and this is a tip I've used for many years, along with that pressure buildup, if the converter's clogged, is going to be a tremendous buildup of heat. So we're going to see our, in this case, this vehicle, where we want to identify where that intake air temp is in the manifold because that's going to be a dead giveaway if that temperature starts to rise in the manifold that's another high level indicator of a clogged converter so we have some other 
information we can utilize to help us determine if we have a clog converter by interpreting the data correctly. The computer is in 100% full control of the boost pressure on this engine. Manifold pressure and actual boost pressure above manifold pressure, which is a separate PID, but you can see in our next data PIDs, turbocharger bypass solenoid command, the percentage of duty cycle. Again, how does that all work? Well, there's a spring-loaded chamber that's holding the wastegate shut. There's a certain amount of pressure in there. As the pressure builds, it will tend to shut the wastegate and reduce the boost pressure. If we want more boost pressure, we can bleed that pressure off the wastegate actuator canister. And that's where we see this duty cycle number. So if boost pressure is rising and the computer's controlling it, then we should see our duty cycle percentage of how much we're bleeding off of the wastegate actuator canister. We'll see that number increase to see that the computer is in control. We talked about open loop versus closed loop and what that is. As you can see here in the next PID, we are definitely in closed loop operation. That means we've exceeded the time limit. The oxygen sensor has indicated it's ready to go to work and our startup temperature clock timer has elapsed. So now we can look and see and we'll get to it that the oxygen sensor is also indicating closed loop and the computer's in control of the fuel. Injector duty cycle, right now hot idle, base idle. Uh, like I said, it's only a 1.5 liter engine. We're down to one millisecond. What's the range? Do you know? Have you ever thought about it? Well, this engine is sequential fuel injected. Okay. In fact, it's gasoline direct injected. But if it was port fuel injection and not GDI, our range is the injector is going to fire once for, with the intake valve opening event. How much time do we have to deliver the fuel past the intake valve? The answer is 20 milliseconds at 6,000 RPM. So if we see, once we get above 18 milliseconds at wide open throttle, we're closing in on about the maximum duty cycle that the factory engineers will run the injector on time. They really don't like to go above 80% duty cycle, which would be around 17 milliseconds at wide open throttle on sequential fuel injection. Now, with gasoline direct injection, we probably only have a window here. At idle, we're at uh, one millisecond, right around there. We probably only have a window of about one to four milliseconds. I think, well, four milliseconds, that's not enough time to put the fuel into this turbocharged engine, even though it is 1.5 liters at wide open throttle. Yes, it is. What does the big thing that the computer has control of in gasoline direct injection? It has control of the fuel volume regulator on the high pressure pump. The computer can run this pressure probably up to somewhere between 2200 and 2900 PSI. So if you had a port fuel injected engine, like an LS1, at 58 PSI, now all of a sudden it's 580. If you only had to open up the injector for one and a half to two milliseconds at idle at 58 PSI, what if you ramped it up to 580? How long do you have to open it up? Not very long. So you see the, the window of duty cycle in gasoline direct injection is very narrow, one to four milliseconds. In port fuel injection, non-GDI, we're going to go up to about 17, 18 milliseconds. In the early days, we had batch firing of injectors where the injectors were tied to one channel. And in that case, we only had a maximum duty cycle of 10 milliseconds because the injector was actually fired twice for the intake opening event. Since 1996, all injectors are sequential.
GDI and sequential port. The reason they're sequential port, they have their own channel, the big one is, if the computer detects a high rate of misfire on a particular cylinder through cylinder time balance, it can turn that injector off. If it was the old days, I'm going back to the days of tune port injection, where they were like a stereo in your house. One, three, five, and seven were on one bank, two, four, six, and eight were on the other. If you killed a driver, you lost half the engine. If you lose one driver or one injector here, you're misfiring on one cylinder. But the computer can stop polluting the air by turning off the fuel. There is no hydrocarbons, there is no carbon monoxide, and there's no oxides of nitrogen from heat if you turn the fuel off. So in an effort, if the computer goes, oh my goodness, I have a misfire, I'm polluting the air tremendously, turn the injector off. Basically, no fuel, no foul. So you won't see my point here on gasoline direct injection as this 2020 Malibu, you will not see injector pulse width going much over four or five milliseconds and that is normal.